we're going to talk about uh, COP28, which is happening soon in Dubai. Although there are some good news around the world, such as the International Energy Agency that just published a report, which projects that the global demand for fossil fuels, so coal, oil, and natural gas will peak before 2030, we are not on track to reach the objectives of the Paris Agreement. Honestly, I feel a bit like a broken record coming here year after year and uh, telling you that we keep breaking temperature records and we see many extreme weather events unfolding all around the world. And again this year, the climate change negotiations are happening in the context of a very tense geopolitical situation through this year. It looks like the 2023 might have a global average temperature at 1.4 degrees higher than pre-industrial times and current projections put us on track to reach 2.4 degrees of warming by the end of the century. This dire assessment is something that everybody agrees on and it's something that will play a key role in the upcoming climate change negotiations, especially in one of the big ticket issues that's called the global stock take. The global stock take is a mechanism under the Paris Agreement that takes place every five years to review progress, um, collective progress, in implementing the Paris Agreement. We've been talking about this for almost two years now and at COP28, governments are supposed to agree on the outcome of this global stock take, talking about mitigation, adaptation, loss and damage, finance, technology transfer, capacity building, but their views still differ on a lot of key things. With fossil fuel emissions being a key driver of climate change and with the conference taking place in the United Arab Emirates, which are a key producer of uh, fossil fuels worldwide, everybody is keeping a very keen eye on any reference to fossil fuels and specifically to mentions of fossil fuel phase out or fossil fuel phase down and also references to the use of uh, carbon capture and storage technology. We might also see in any of these outcome documents are references to a target on tripling renewable energy capacity and a doubling of the rate of energy efficiency improvements by 2030. So there's been growing momentum around such goals over the past year. The second big ticket issue at the conference is the operationalization of the fund for responding to loss and damage. The agreement to set up such a fund was a big breakthrough at COP27, but the decision was actually so far an empty shell. A so-called transitional committee met all through the year to try and sort out um, proposed modalities for this fund. The task was really big, but in the fourth meeting, the transitional committee could not agree on a recommendation that they would send to the bank. One of the big issues of disagreement is who would host it. Should it be in some form or shape hosted by the World Bank? Another thing to look out for is the adoption of two declarations at the margin of the conference. Uh, one uh, will target health and the other one will address food systems. It's still important to acknowledge the difference between what happens at the margins of the conference and what is part of the actual negotiations. In the past, we've seen many such declarations um, adopted at the margins of the climate change conferences because there's a lot of political um, and public attention, but the follow through on these declarations hasn't necessarily been all that great. In the past year, uh, obviously the Russian aggression against Ukraine overshadowed a lot of the negotiations and this year we'll see a conflict within the very region where the conference is going to take place which is on a lot of people's mind and is bundling a lot of diplomatic efforts at the moment. Climate change doesn't happen in a vacuum. We see different countries struggling to cope with different challenges. Climate change actually compounding their capacity to respond to those challenges, but also issues such as these geopolitical tensions and any repercussions thereof on food security, on energy prices that are in turn limiting a lot of government's capacity to um, take ambitious climate action. So we'll see what will happen at COP28, to what extent the conference will help move the needle and serve as a course correction towards more ambitious climate action.